everyone welcome to another video so as you can see i once again have my base on so my concealer my foundation my eye primer and my eyebrows and a little bit of powder i had to really spot conceal a lot today <laughs> um but this is going to be another catch-up video i have fallen so behind and i initially was going to make a video talking about my suffering but at this point i just don't really feel like talking about it anymore so i'm just not <laughs> But suffice to say, a lot of things happened all at the same time and it sucks. I'll just leave it at that. But I've been exhausted. Um, I'm just going to do a hodgepodge of stuff that I had meant to do actual like more in-depth videos on, but I just don't think I'm going to be able to. So the reason I have the base on is just to save some time so I can really spend some time focusing on these other products. First and foremost, I was going to do three looks using this, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. The other palette that I had been meaning to do a dedicated video on was a palette with Cleo and collaboration with Minsko, who I've said before is one of my favorite YouTubers of all time. So one of the things that she developed several months ago at this point was Shadow Gallery with Cleo, so I got the cooler toned one. So I think I'm going to just go ahead and use the mattes from here today because this will just be the easiest. It actually is technically a face palette. These three shades here are supposed to be usable for the face with this being like a face highlighter, but I'm just going to use this palette here and I'm just going to use this to build a look. The mattes are going to be really simple because I really want to focus mostly on the shimmers so I'm just going to lay down just enough dimension that I have something to work with and then after that I'll just go straight into the shimmers. I'm just going to use this shade down here. And I can always go back in and make it darker later so... I'm just wanting to have a little bit of depth and dimension, but I don't want to put this matte all over my eyelid because I want the shimmers to have something to stick to. I used the P. Louise eye base today, so again, any texture you see is not the eyeshadow, it is my eyelid. Okay, that's a good that's a good enough start for now. And then I'm going to take a smaller brush and I'm going to use that on the lower lash line. And I'm just using a variety of Sonia G brushes today. I'm trying to remember to actually like, you know, but again, I'm not going to do too much on the lower lash line yet. So I'm going to put the palette down just for a second and I'm going to go into the Red Panda. I'm hoping to use multiple shimmers in this look because I really want to see if any of these are that pink to coral that I like. I see three candidate. So I think I'm going to start off dark. I'm going to start off with this shade right here. I'm going to put this kind of close to my lash line. These shades seem a little bit firmer pressed in the pan and less squishy. Now, I know some people have talked about having issues with oil seepage in the palette, and while it's purely cosmetic, it's kind of gross and it's not really fun to deal with. I have never had that problem with any of my sugar drizzle palettes, but I am well aware of the fact that it can be a problem for certain people, not super professional to deal with. Hoping that that becomes less common as time goes on, but I will just say anecdotally speaking, it so far has evaded me. Um, but this shimmer seems pretty hard pressed, which is good so it's not too terribly oily or greasy, but that does mean that I'm kind of having to work to build it up a little bit. It does have a nice dark base and it's not quite as ultra foiled or ultra glittery, but since it's darker, I'll give it a pass. This palette I think was what, like $40, $45 or something, or it was right around like that range. So for that amount of money, this shimmer, this specific shade is not really doing it for me, so hopefully we get a redemption arc in a couple minutes. It's not gonna be like the star shade or anything now. I don't know what this is going to look like with the finger because I'm not using my fingers for this. I'm going to try and avoid using my fingers until the very last steps because I need precision. Um, but looking at it up close, it does look pretty boring. Not off to the greatest start there, but we'll see. I'm going to go into Red Panda down here. I'm kind of nervous. I feel like this might be a replay of my Pat McGrath moment with that quad. But I'm going to put this right here. Okay, it's a little bit more red leaning. Again, it's not really giving off like a really shiny effect. It's definitely got a nice opaque base pigmentation to it, so it's going on nicely, but the shine isn't quite what I was hoping for. But it does apply really nicely. I'm not getting fallout, and you can see the blend was very easy for me to create. The look's not done yet. I know it looks really crazy right now, but we are gonna 
continue. I'm just messing around with lots of different shades in one look today since I am not going to be able to give this palette a dedicated video like I'd hoped. I know everybody's like, oh, but like you have all the time in the world, you're not trying to review things on time, so why are you saying you can't do it? I just, it's so exhausting for me to think about things I haven't done yet and just watch it stare at me for months and months and months. Sometimes I just have to put it to rest and move on. So it's, I'm not gonna say never, but it's definitely gonna be on the extreme back burner for now because the more I kept thinking about it, the more it stressed me out and I was like, you know what? I just put it in a video, use as many shades as you can and just move on and revisit it if you are able to. My energy levels are just so impossible for me to work with right now. Like I literally feel like I have like fractions of a spoons some days. I really wanna try this shade here, Firefox, which of course I pretty much had to get this shade for this for this palette because the shade is named Firefox. I mean, how could I not considering that my username is literally Fox Waffles? And if that's taken, it's Firefox Waffles. So like my Pokemon Go is Firefox Waffles because my sister took my took Fox Waffles because she just was messing with me. This palette has my name in it. So I'm gonna stick this shade up here on top. Ooh, okay, this is definitely giving me the vibes of the shade that it has the it has the duochrome shift that I like. So I'm I was really excited when I saw this because I was like, what if it's that pink to coral golden duochrome that I love so much? And I think it's giving it to me, but I'm gonna switch to a different brush shape that can fit in that section of my eye better. And this shade is definitely much more high shine and much more sparkly than the other two that I was just using. So you can see the difference in effect there. It still does not feel very greasy or oily though, which is great. And I'm gonna leave room on the inner corner for some other stuff. Okay, yeah, this shade pretty much makes that whole palette worth it for me. I'm not acting enthused because I'm very tired right now, but I'm extremely, internally, I'm like, screaming. And I do like how so far, with my eye primer not being set and using a brush, I've been getting pretty good results. This shade does also have a base, kind of a pinky base, so if you blend it out, you're gonna start seeing that pop up. It doesn't seem like it turns anything ashy, so... I'm not super bothered. I am gonna go in with some kind of matte just to blend everything out so that the undercast of all these shades isn't pulling too far too obviously. I'm going to take a very tiny brush and I'm going to use this shade down here. This is the other shade that I was really excited about. There's like two different pink to gold with coral undertone duochromes I like. There's the one I just used which is a lot more fiery and then there's this one, which is a lot more pink. It's like there's two variations. I like both. I like both a lot. This shade is really pretty too. I could totally see myself also using this shade all over the eyelid if I wanted the look to be pinker. And so far, I haven't gotten any real notable fallout like at all, probably because of the fact that I didn't set the base. That is so pretty. Now, as you can see, the darker shimmer I used really isn't coming through very well, so I'm going to use my finger now. It definitely is more of like a dark shimmer. The bigger point of it is, as you can see here, it's got multicolored reflex, so almost got like hollow vibes, but not really. So I'm just going to use my finger to very gently see if I can stamp on a darker layer. I really want to get that darkness, that vertical gradient. Okay, I think that looks a little bit better, but it's still not as dark as I would have liked it to be, which is fine because it's I just, it looked darker in the pan than it's turning on my eyes. I will just have to say that. So that shade was a little bit disappointing, <laughs> just a little bit, but it's not, it's not bad on its own. I'm going to go back into Red Panda a little more where I think I need it. Yeah, I'm just, that Firefox shade is definitely everything. The other, both Red Panda and Nava, mm, they're okay. And then Masala is really, really pretty. So it's kind of the ver my verdict on that so far. And now I'm gonna go into Bamboo Snack. And this is gonna be my inner corner shade. I think this, this looks like it's gonna be a similar, yeah, it picks up similarly. So it's gonna have kind of that more glittery finish. There's still a little bit of Masala on this brush, but that's okay. I don't mind the two of them mixing. The shade is a very, very, very white with an with an air of pink. It's almost got that cool frosty pink, but it's not quite. It's still got a little bit of warmth to it. It's like champagne with cool pink reflex, which is actually quite unique. It's a very unique shade right here. And it works as an inner corner highlight for me. It's not giving too much of a cast, so I can pull it off. Any cast you're seeing is probably just the leftover of Masala. <laughs> and then I'm going to use that on my lower lash line as well, just the usual the usual places. I mean, it's not anything super special. This is not a very complicated look. It just has a lot of shades. 
Yeah, I just felt like playing with makeup today. I am still trying to work on some other three and four looks with palettes videos, but I just wanted to take a break from that and just do something easy. So that's going to be a very quick demo of a fraction of Red Panda that really barely scratches the surface of that palette, I'll be honest, but I just wanted to give it its moment because I bought it because literally it me and I it would have it was just such a shame that I wasn't able to get around to using it. So I'm going to go back in to the Clio palette now and I'm going to so I'm going to, I think, use this shade up here because this shade is a little bit more chocolate toned and has less gray. So it's going to work with this palette and I'm going to use my Sonia G soft shader just so that I have the additional precision. I want to really create some depth and dimension at the outer corner so that the eye look doesn't look super flat. Cleo mattes these days are so just soft. They blend really well. They just give off this really blurred, almost like a watercolor effect. I absolutely love Korean matte shadows these days. The shimmers for various brands are honestly pretty hit or miss because Korean brands still really like to stick glitters and everything. And then their shimmers, if they're not like the sheer sparkly formula, they are just so weak. Like I don't like Etude House's shimmers because of this. They are so incredibly weak. Um, so I, so Korean shimmers are really hit or miss, but the mattes by and large these days all have that really, really soft blended blurring formula. It just is an absolute pleasure to work with, so I love Korean mattes. If I had the money for it, I would definitely have a lot more Korean eyeshadow palettes than I do. And just do you see how subtle of a gradient I can create? And so you can see compared to the other side, I've introduced a lot of added depth, which is good. They're very buildable too, so it's really hard to over apply. So overall, I just they're just so easy to use. So that's what that looks like right now. I do really, really like it. And I think I could use, I'm gonna kind of lay up the outer corner a little bit. So I'm going to go back in with that tiny brush. I wiped it off a little bit and I'm going to go back into palette and I'm going to go into this shade right here and I'm going to use that at that negative space. Definitely a very popular technique. It's especially a lot more trendier these days than it used to be so I see it a lot these days which is really awesome. I'm just going to pop it right there in that negative space. This is another really pretty pink shade. Very similar to Masala, but it's like you just added a lot more, you just made it a lot lighter. So it's got a lot more gold champagne to it as opposed to being straight up gold and red, gold and pink. It's a lot more, got a lot more white in it compared to the shade that's right here. I'm going to take more Firefox. I just really want to make sure it is just like in your face. All right, so I'm gonna put that down. So that is what we are looking like right now. Definitely very flashy. I do want to quickly go back into this Cleo palette and I'm going to take this shade up here, which is gonna barely show up as like the lightest contour shade on the planet. And the reason for that is because I do wanna go under the pink shimmer I laid down just so that it blends out into something. I also do like kind of pulling my lower eyeshadow down just a little bit with very light contour shades like this because it makes the length, middle length of my face a little bit shorter. So you see it's, it's super subtle. It also kind of does like contouring my under eye fat without me actually like dead, having a dedicated drawing the line because I can't actually contour it to save my life. But just adding a little bit of barely there eyeshadow can give off a similar effect. As you can see, it is barely visible, but I feel like it still just makes a world of a difference. Okay, and then lastly, I'm going to blend all of this out with a very, very light colored shade. So I'm just going to use, I'm going to use this shade up here. We all know what that one's meant for, right? And I'm just going to take a really big brush and I'm just going to use this to make sure that the cast is blended out and also that the end of the look is blended out too. Just like that. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> it's, I know, it's, it's so complicated. So I'm going to end the look here. I love how this turned out because Firefox is everything I thought it would be. So I'm gonna put on some lashes off camera and I'll be back and we can finish off the face with some other stuff. Okay, so I finished up with lashes. I did add a little bit of eyeliner because I felt like the brown just wasn't going dark enough for my preferences. I kind of had a snafu drawing on my false lashes. I accidentally drew them. As you can see, I drew them going down a little bit too far, but 
that's fine because like from far away it honestly doesn't look that bad so we'll just roll with it so i'm going to go in and going to start on the blush now so kind of want to um demo using this liquid nars blush these are the ones that are being discontinued and being replaced with the kinds that i probably am not going to like because i hear because i hear that those are kind of dewy <laughs> um i've tried the other one i have which is sex appeal and this is torrid there are some shades on beauty box korea but it costs a lot to import stuff like that so i don't know if i'm gonna get it okay i'm gonna try and use this i find that i have a better time using it if i put some on like the back of my hand okay i'm going to use this it brushes for ulta it's just an angled brush it's still a little bit too big for what i was looking for but once it's all evenly dispersed up in the bristles and you know i kind of dampen it out so and even this it's probably a little too much. I do kind of like using these as base blushes. I find it's okay. It sometimes lifts up my base, sometimes it doesn't. I think in this case it did a little bit. Yeah, it's it's they're all right. I am kind of, I I got them on sale and I'm glad I did. Seems like they're a little bit moody sometimes, but they're not bad. But yeah, I think you can kind of tell what I mean though by like it's like okay. So they aren't my favorite, but I'm not gonna go and get the new ones either because I don't think I'm gonna like those any more than these. I feel like these would look better if they had like a nail polish applicator, which the Addiction Cheek Polishes do. And I only have one shade of that because I ended up never using it, so then I could couldn't really justify getting the other shades and I won I think all the other blush shades in Addictions formula are like dewy so I thought that would be a waste of my money yeah I think I'm using the wrong brush for it right now too so that's not helping I don't know this shade do be looking a little bit rough like looks like it's been through some we could have done better than this <laughs> this is me learning how to use different kinds of blush um so I'm just going to lay that to rest I'm going to now go into powder blush to blend this abomination out so I'm going to use the Dior blush in the shade Coral, which I really like. I don't know how this compares to the new formula. So as you can see, it is a lowercase Dior. Uh, as somebody who is neither for or against Talcon Cosmetics, I, 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 don't, I don't really understand or care as long as the, the formula is still good. So I've been hearing a lot of really mixed reviews about the new formulation. And Dior is in the middle of reformulating everything again, this time to make it what like clean and also to like inflate the prices by another 10 bucks, which is like super annoying. So I definitely went really heavy on the blush today because the NARS blush like kind of came to eat me alive. <laughs> that was really awkward. So I used the coral to try and lighten it up a little bit, but I am going to go over with face powder to set my face and to try and dilute this a little bit because this is a little bit much. I haven't used this shade yet. I have uh, I use rosewood, but I haven't actually had a chance to use cherry yet. So I'm going to use cherry and I'm going to stick this right underneath my eyes, which is where I like to. Yeah, you can see the capital letters. And I'll let you know if these hard pan as I use them. Obviously, I can't tell you if it'll hard pan because I've only used it once. I'm kind of trying to not cover up the fake lashes that I drew. I'm just putting a little bit here. I'm just using a Refer 36, and this is technically not what the Refer 36 is meant for, but it was the right size and shape for what I wanted. I really want to get the Sonia G Beautylish new stippling brush. That brush looks like it'll be perfect for me to apply blushes like these with. I don't know if I can justify it. I know Beautylish lets you do things in three payments, but it seems kind of frivolous to do that. I'm not sure though, I really want that brush. Okay, and then because the last thing we need is more blush, I do want to show you guys what rosewood looks like because I think rosewood will be really good to tone down the outer part of my face. So I'm just going to flip to the other side of my Refer 24. Now I've already used rosewood a couple times because it just seems like it's just such a good everything blush. I feel like rosewood goes really well with pretty much everything that I've thrown at it so far. And I have not had rose rosewood hard pan on me yet. Yeah, as you can see, it's a little bit more muted and toned down almost gives like a rosy bronzer vibe which is why you can see me just kind of going all across the perimeter of my face with it because it can kind of do that honestly so I'm in lieu of a bronzer I'm just gonna use that today I'm going to take the Bobbi Brown loose powder in soft porcelain the foundation I used today is the Suku foundation because my skin has not been doing well at all the suku foundation is just not going to catch on any dry flaky patches or anything like that but it is a little bit dark and it's a little bit gray so i'm going to use this soft porcelain powder as a chance to also brighten the inside of my face and i'm going to use this all over my blush 
and you see the blush came off on the brush too but I think you can see that I've already managed to tone it down significantly this Bobbi Brown powder very basic and very boring but it's a really good powder I bring this to travel because if I break it it's so easy to replace and it just works really well it holds my makeup down really well and because I seem to always be traveling to places that are really really like hot it, it holds my makeup in that kind of weather really really well so this powder gets a lot of use not in the day to day but the moment I have to go out of town for anything this powder is coming with me okay so you can see how much blush came off onto the bristles here and I was able to significantly tone everything down now my face is really really matte so there is no room for highlighter so I'm going to use some setting spray I feel like we literally took the longest route possible to finish this face of makeup but we're getting there this is just my D'Alba can barely see the logo anymore and I still have one backup after this and then after that I'm like kind of SOL but thankfully I have found some really nice setting sprays that I'll go to after that so that's cool okay so remember how I said that in, a, in my previous video I talked about how I had buying the Natasha Denona love palette and one other palette on sale after selling them and then regretting it well I like during that exact same declutter, I started getting really embarrassed about my makeup collection and I thought that I had to sell anything that I wasn't actively using or else I would be like having too much makeup or something. That was a lesson learned that having a lot of makeup is completely fine. So these days I am a very proud makeup maximalist and that's completely fine. Um, you know, and I honestly, I haven't really bought that much makeup this year because as my collection has grown, the holes in my collection I look to fill and the level and the level of amazingness that it has to be to catch my eye has begun to narrow down things have to really be super super special or super niche or something i really don't have yet before i'll go for it but anyways one of the products i decluttered was a variety of natasha denona face palettes which was like a huge mistake um but i'm gonna use the natasha denona bloom palette this is brand new and i'm going to go into this shade right here as my highlighter and i just want to use a little bit And this is a very glittery one, like it specifically says Glow Extreme. So I'm just going to use a little bit of this kind of dusted across my cheekbones. I don't want this look to be too glowy. I mean, I say that, but this look is probably going to end up pretty glowy. And I can't really use that shade on like my nose or anything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I'm going to go for this highlighter that's actually right here. And I'm going to just use my finger and see how this works as a nose highlighter. I know Minsko used it as a face highlighter and she said that you can use it this way and I'm just gonna tap a little bit just towards the front as you can tell it is much much smoother no glittery particles at all but it's not chalky which is nice a lot of Korean highlighters especially older ones used to be like literal chalk but I think they've come a long way since they've improved a lot this is really pretty it's like it's got a nice translucent sheen, so it just makes everything look kind of glossy. Really, really soft and pretty without the chalk. So I'm just going to put on some lip liner, and I'm going to just go in with Buxom Confidential. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I haven't sharpened all my other ones. I have a lot of brushes I need to wash, and at the same time I do that, I'm going to sharpen all my lip liners. Shout out to everyone with ADHD who just constantly thinks they're lazy. This is the shade I'm going to use. It's from Rose Ink. It's called Dreamed You. And it said it was like a dark warm rose and I actually don't really have a shade like this in my entire collection. I have like cool pinks and I have like warm burnts and then I have like every single variation of red you could probably imagine and I still want more. But I don't actually have these like rosier shades and I've been really into wanting to try them lately. So not like this very, sp it's a very specific desaturated warm rose with a hint of milk. Very, very specific. And that's why I specifically went for this color because I knew I needed it. There's a hole in my collection this could fill. Yeah, see, I just, I don't have a shade like this in my entire collection because younger me would have just immediately said no to a shade this desaturated. But I've had a couple makeup looks I've done where not having this, I definitely definitely noticed and I really wished I had a shade like this so that's why I went ahead and decided to go for this now this is an expensive lip product I think this is $28 um, but as you can see it is more on the moussey side which is what I like it's a little bit messy so I'm just going to 
Okay, so I used a combination of my fingers and pressing my lips together like 500 times in a row. Ignore how shapeless and messy this lip job today was, okay? Like even though it's moussey, I can definitely still tell this is like a very like American formula of a matte lipstick. Okay, so I zoomed out a hair just so you guys can really get a view of my makeup look. Now my bangs definitely do need trimming, so I do apologize. They're kind of blocking some of the makeup right now. Uh, but this is how everything looks together. I think it's actually quite cohesive. And I do actually really like this lip color. I could have gone for something more warm, but I think that would have drawn too much attention. And I, the eyes are taking up so much of the attention. I, the lips being more desaturated, I think, helps actually make the look a little bit more cohesive. I absolutely love the shade Firefox. It is everything I thought it would be and more. And of course, I love that it is the name of my username. Like, that's just perfect. So... I am really happy with this look, if only just for Firefox alone. I so far have had a really great experience with everything else, like the blush. The blush, for instance, aside from the fact that I like, I'm apparently absolute trash at using liquid blushes, so of course I'm going to keep practicing with these. Um, it'll definitely boil down to just finding the right tools and whatnot, but using it as a base it actually, as you can see, honestly, it worked pretty well. Like, you can barely see it anymore, but it's just almost like you're laying down a watercolor base and then you're drawing on top of that. It's kind of what it feels like to me. So I still really like it for that purpose. This right here is just such a gem. I do really, really like this. I honestly could wholeheartedly recommend this to just about anyone. You have a really great range. You saw how great the mats performed. I didn't have a chance to showcase the shimmers in this, but I will try and come back and revisit this for another video and show that to you. But I definitely just think this is something worth getting. And the packaging is really nice. It's actually really, really heavy. And the clear plastic means it's so easy for me to pick this up. And of course, I can see exactly what's inside. It's just overall just really, really great. I wish I had the unlimited budget to just get all the Korean eyeshadow palettes I've been wanting because the masks are just truly such a dream to work with. Everything else is really great. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. I, I mostly honestly just wanted to relax and play with some makeup without the stress of eyeshadow palette looks because I am working through like two eyeshadow palettes at the same time and I just needed a break. So, and I just really like how everything looks. So, yeah, don't mind my very frizzy hair. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed watching me play with some makeup that I was long overdue to feature. So, me and Melody say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about any of the products that I used. And I think that will be it for now. I love how she always shows up right as I finish filming. Like, she has a timer in her head and she shows up right when I'm done. Like, she's done this, like, three or four times in a row now and it's the cutest thing ever. I know, I love you so much. Isn't she cute? She's the cutest. And look at, look at her. Look at the spots. Are these not the best spots ever? I know, you are so cute. Like, what even is the point of me coming on camera doing makeup? I could just show a, I could just have you in the camera for 30 minutes and people would watch it because you are so cute. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.